just before we get started, um, like I say, what we're going to do all about this morning is I'm going to show you some mark making and some dry mark making with things that you can use in your home. Talk about the benefits of it, why it's really good and just hopefully get my little learner to have a little bit of a play with me as well. Um, I'm going to then show you just a few Easter, really simple Easter egg box crafts that you can do at home um, and celebrate Easter with your little ones. Um, so for starters I'm going to introduce you to our characters so that you know who we've got. So at Little Learners we're all about um, mark making and messy play. So we, we do mark making and we use messy play really to sort of um, add the, the real fun element to the mark making but we're really an educational um, messy play class. Um, so the mark making side of it we've got four different characters that I'm going to introduce you to now and what I like to do in my classes, some of the other franchisees do slightly other things but I like to sing the song at the end um, just so that it helps sort of with the repetition really of getting these marks down. So the, the four marks that we teach in our classes are the fundamentals basically of every single letter and number and shape so it's really about just getting lots of practice in, having lots of fun and trying to make these marks in loads of different ways um, and they're learning really without even realising it. So let's get cracking. Do you want to come and join me Joshy or do you, do you want to come in a bit? Do you want to come and introduce these characters with me? And come and tell everybody who this is? So enthusiastic. This is our character called Lionel. Lionel. And he's called Lionel because we're gonna um, just start to do that. Alright, you go and do that then. <laughs> God please them all. Uh, <laughs> this is our character. He's called Lionel and he makes straight lines. So we call him Lionel because he loves straight lines and he is a soldier, so he even walks in a straight line. Anybody walk in a straight line? Try and do some much, 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 much. So what we like to do is we like to sing a song about each of our characters. Normally I don't do one per class, but I'll just give you a really quick whistle stop tour from all of them. So if you come to my classes, hello, um, and you'll know the song, so please sing along. I can't hear you, but sing as loud as you can. So I'm just going to do a quick one. It's to the tune of London Bridge is Falling Down. So by the time the fourth character comes on, you'll know what we're doing. Are you ready? Everybody make your mark, make your mark, make your mark. Everybody make your mark, just like Lionel. Make a straight line in the air, in the air, in the air. Make a straight line in the air, just like Lionel. And for Lionel, we're going to see if he can make a really big straight line. Can anyone make a big straight line here? Ready? As big as you can. Make a straight line really big, really big, really big. Make a straight line really big. Well done, just like Lionel. Well done. And you can practice making those straight lines yourself as well. It's a very big line. It was a very big line. Who is this, Josh? Who have we got next? Archie Rainbow. It's Archie Rainbow. And we love Archie Rainbow. He is made up of lots of different colours. And we call him Archie. Because, can you see, he's got some lovely archers there. And he's got clouds. And he's got some clouds, and even those have got some archers on as well, haven't they? And sometimes it rains. Sometimes it rains, but not at the minute. It's lovely weather, isn't it? When so, it's raining, we need an umbrella. We would need an umbrella, wouldn't we? So, you know, our uh, head, head got wet. That's exactly right, yes. We would, wouldn't um, we? I mean, and when the... When, I, when the rain goes head, it goes pitter patter, rain drops. It does, you know what you're talking about. Yes, so for Archie Rainbow, we make lots of little curves and humps like that. Archies like that. And the letters that and we can do that are things like this. a mmm and a mmm and, and an oh. And this time. I know, we're going to do that in a minute. So let's sing our quick song about Archie Rainbow. We're already going to make some archers for Archie Rainbow. Everybody make your mark, make your mark, make your mark. Everybody make your mark, just like Archie. Make a rainbow in the air, in the air, in the air. 
make a rainbow in the air, just like Archie. And for Archie Rainbow, we're going to make lots of little tiny rainbows. Are you ready? Some really small ones. Make a rainbow really small, really small, really small. Make the rainbows really small, just like Archie. Rainbows. No. Wow, eh? no. Well, this is our next character. Do you want to hold him up? Hold her up to the camera. Here, look. Who does this, everybody? <laughs> Who's this, everybody? Want to move your hand down a little bit? That's it. Who is it, Josh? My Archie Rainbow. Are you sure? That's what it will mean. It's right, lad. So this is our next character. Um, and 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 the last one is Ziggy Monster. It is. It is. Well done, Josh. This is our next character called Swirlo. And can you see? She, we call her a she because she is a magic mixing pot. And she's got a little swirl on the top of her head. And her face is really big circle. So we like to go round and round and round and round and round and round and round for Swirlo. So we're going to make some circles. Are you ready, Josh? You can do some lovely circles. Everybody make your mark, make your mark, make your mark. Everybody make your mark, just like Swirlow. Make a circle in the air, in the air, in the air. Make a circle in the air, just like Swirlow. And for Swirlow, we're going to do some slow circles. Really, really slow. Are you ready? Make a circle really slow, really slow, really slow. Make a circle really slow, just like Swirlow. Well done if you're joining in at home. Brilliant! Give yourselves a big round of applause. Right, this is our last character. Look what I'm doing already. He's doing a lovely big circle. Well done. This is our last character. And what did we say he's called, Josh? Ziggy. He's called Ziggy Monster. Look what I'm doing. And what are you doing? You're doing some zigzags. This is our character called Ziggy Monster and he loves it when we do some zigzags. He's got some pointy zigzags on his head. He's got some pointy zigzag teeth. Are you doing you getting dizzy? But he's a really friendly monster and we love our Ziggy Monster. So we're going to try and do some zigzags. Zigzags are the hardest mark of, of all really. So we kind of teach those last but it's a bit later when they start to do the zigzags. Look what I'm doing! But we're going to do our song, last song. That's what I'm doing. Well done, mister. Mm. Are you ready to do some song, uh, some singing for Ziggy? Are you ready? Everybody make, make your mark, mark. Make it. your mark. Make your mark. Everybody make your mark. Just like Ziggy. Make some zigzags in the air. In the air. In the air. Make some zigzags in the air. Just like Ziggy. And to finish off with our zigzags for Ziggy, we're going to do them as fast as we can. Are you ready? I want to see everybody going as fast as you possibly can. Are you ready? <gasps> Make some zigzags really fast, really fast, really fast. Make some zigzags really fast, just like Ziggy. Wow, we're giving ourselves a big round of applause. That was fantastic. Right, well done, everybody. What we do with those marks is when we're doing our mark making, we try and make those marks. So... It doesn't matter whether your little ones can. Obviously, the older they are, the more likely to they start. I'm here. Hello. They're going to try to start to make those marks. But just by seeing them, I'm just seeing down. you make those marks, just with everything, it's repetition that is the key. So, right, what are we going to do? We're going to try. We're going to use some sand. So I've got some coloured sand here. Upside down. Oh, my word. You're picking upside down. Right, I've got a special job for you, Joshie. I need you. So... What we're going to fill our tuff tray with is we've got some coloured sand here. So obviously, if you've got coloured sand, brilliant. If you haven't, you can also use flour. We're going to have a little tray of flour in a minute to show you. Um, if you haven't got things like flour, other stuff you can use is anything powdery, really. So, you know, powdery mash, like dry mashed potato, porridge oats, you can either use them as they are or you can blend them up and that gives a flour-like texture. And can um, we put all of them in? Yeah, we can, yeah. <laughs> we can, you can use um, 
just normal sand, it doesn't have to be coloured sand. So whatever you've wow. got. And also, I'm using a tough tray, My obviously. My favourite colour is purple. Is it? Well, you want to come round here, Joshy, so everybody can see you. Yeah. You can start pouring some of these in there, making a nice pattern if you like. So, um, I'm using a big tough tray, um, but equally it doesn't, it is, doesn't have to be on that scale, you can use, so I've got littler ones, um, just like little trays like that that I use, uh, you can even use things like maybe in a baking tray, you know, stuff like that, anything you've got, or if you're brave enough and you've just got like a fl floor, anything that is flat and hard that they can just make their marks on, it's absolutely fine. But we use our tough trays quite a lot, so it's nice to have them. Right, so what can we do? What shall we make, Joshy? Shall we make... Blue one, yellow and orange. Brilliant. Right, what shall we do? Shall we make a cross? Yeah. Let's make... Please, can you... I can, I can do some of that one. So obviously, there you go. Part of the fun is probably getting them involved if they're older to get it set up. If they're younger, you might prefer to use things like flour, just so that obviously if they're putting it in their mouths, you know that it's just a bit of flour. Um, what I tend to do with flour, I'll show you in a second, is I tend to sieve it. Sieve nah. it just because they don't need very much. <coughs> but having said that, if you've got really... Can you stand down here then? Can you put it in for us? If you have got younger ones, rather than actually make the marks, they might prefer just to like bang it and make it all just fly everywhere. So particularly when it's nice weather, it's something that if you don't want to clean it up, you might want to do it outside. Um, but really but sand generally is pretty easy to clean up. That's to the flowers. purple. They have. It's Fantastic. Should we get a few more colours going? Here we go. So obviously we like to use the colours. We do a lot of coloured sand in class because there's just lots of things I need that you can do with about it. This. Shall we have? Uh, <laughs> maybe orange. Maybe some orange. What about some yellow? I haven't got any yellow. Maybe if you go over there, Joshy, and fill in those gaps over there. So, some of the things that you can use. How did you use yellow, please? There you go, good manners. Please. There you go. So, some of the things that you might want to use in your trough tray. As well as obviously you can just get your fingers in there and that makes brilliant marks. So you can make all the different marks, straight lines. Josh is doing some circles over there. Fingers are perfect, hands are perfect. But if you've got other stuff lying around, I've got some coloured lollipop sticks. So normal lollipop sticks are fine. Um, if you've got any please, lollipops, just give them a wash. Can you open this please? I can. I'll nice. that. All right. Oops, there you go. So I've got those. They're really good. Can make some marks with those. They can go in. And um, for younger ones, for littler ones, they might find it easier if you've got brushes. You can, and then you can get, just go for it and bang things like that. There we go. Brushes are really, really good. And um, as are paint brushes. I've got paint brushes as well, so if you've got any of those lying around. And all of these work with everything. So you know the flour, um, porridge. Anything really that you've got lying around your house that you can make a mark with. So we'll pop those in. Also got some things like these, some scrapers that are really good. You can give it a good swish. There you go, Josh. What? I of this. I of And just spoons. Letters that have got our different characters on. 
Um, but you can make your own, you can print things off. Um, you can get them practicing their name if they're a little bit older. So it's a really good it's a really good activity before they are you know confidently using pens and pencils to just make their marks and things like this. Um, and even if they are supposed, even if they're reception they're using them practicing their name. letters and shapes, oh, anything that you've got really, or you could just have a game. What we like to do actually, Josh, is we like to play noughts and crosses, don't we? Let's okay, have a game of noughts and crosses. Let's see if we can do it in here. We'll give it a shake. We can draw as the board. That's it. Now I'm going to go here. Yeah. Uh, you're there, we're right there in the middle. We'll make it look. Um, I'm going to go here. But you can go in the middle. Do I go in the middle? Oh, no, I can't go in the middle. I'll go in the middle. Oh, you're going to go there. You've got to stop me. Uh -huh. So you've got two in a line there. I'm going to go there. So but I'm, Josh, I've got two in a row there. Oh, you stop me. No, I've got two. Oh, I'm going to go there. But no. Oh, no, what's happened? I have one. He's one again. He always beats me at noughts and crosses. Don't you? The noughts and crosses is a really good game because obviously it practices loads of skills like obviously the mark making, practicing um, crosses, noughts, lines for drawing the board. But actually the hardest part of noughts and crosses is like letting them win <laughs> and I'm not going crazy. So we're not quite there yet. It's still, it's still a point of contention. But it you know, practices turn take, take in and things like that. So noughts and crosses is a really good one. So what we'll show you as well, should we show them um, what this all looks like if you do it in flower? We'll get a little tray. We'll show you. Oh, obviously I've got some glitter as well. I very, even for me, I very rarely use glitter in the house. Because if anyone has used glitter, I love it and it's brilliant. And I don't mind using it in class, but in my own house, <laughs> I use it very, very sparingly. So, might might save that from around side. <laughs> right, shall we get some flour on the go and show you that tray? And I'll show you just quickly how we do it in flour as well. Pop those to one side. Will you help me to sift some flour in a minute, Joshy? Yeah. Oh wow, good boy. Right, let's see how much of that you can see. Ready, letters! Woo! I was going to move that back a bit, Josh. Oh, in my hair. <laughs> Thank you. Right, I think we can see that now, can't we? <laughs> right, so. <laughs> let's try and help me with some flour. So, obviously, if you've got flour, you can just chuck it in there. But, what I like to do is sieve it. One, you use a bit less. Let me help. I know we're going to tell you what we're going to do. Use a little bit less. And also, it, it's actually Honey. better for mark making when you haven't got loads in. So, if you want to do the pouring or the sieving. Mm. Oh, yeah, you can do it like that. Get the sieving. Good idea. Just scoop it out. That's it. And then go shake, 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 shake. Like, like dusting a cake. There you go. Good work. Powdery. 
anything really that you've got that is powdery um, and they'll have quite a lot of fun with it and as we say if you wanted to do it outside if you're looking you've got some yeah. space outside yeah. now is the time yeah. it's lovely weather it's raining it's raining well done this time it's going to be <laughs> right I'm just going to see if anyone's asked any Mummy. questions Mummy. that I can Mummy. answer this time it's going to be snowy oh it's going to be snowing hello everybody let me just see if anyone's asked any questions that I can answer. Christmas Eve, Christmas Eve day. Christmas Eve day. Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve. Right, so we're going to get on to our Easter crafts. So, the um, I'm just going to show you some really quick um, Easter crafts that you can do with egg boxes. Um, for us... Um, it's Christmas cra crafts. Eve. It's Christmas Eve. Is it Christmas Eve? Wow. Oh, it is like snow. For us, crafts that take a long time just don't really work yet. So Josh is just turned three. Oh, no. um, turn and it just hasn't it's really raining. got the attention span. Uh, it's raining. Like that. It's raining. <laughs> um, hey, yes. It's, oh, it's snowing. It's raining. It's raining. But he, he really likes things, obviously, when he's doing them, if he's enjoying them in the moment. So any crafts that we do, as long as he's enjoying it in the moment, it's okay. But he can't do necessarily things that take a long time and think about the end goal. He's got to be enjoying it right now, which is perfectly normal. So crafts might be something that, you know, you end up doing a little bit more of. But what I'm showing you here is something that's really quick. It's not going to take you hardly any time. But they look really nice and they're pretty cute. Um, so hopefully... You we don't eat it, so we? We don't, do we? It's the first thing. I'm going to show you two things that you can do with egg boxes. The first one is our lovely little it's snowing, look. Easter basket. It's snowing. Oh, wow. Our lovely little egg box Easter baskets. There. But you haven't finished them. You have finished them. Remember. So all you need for those are, obviously, um, one of those cut out of your egg box and um, for the colouring around it you can either obviously use paint if you've got it I for this one used um, a paint stick which are these things we've got one yeah which are these things paint sticks and um, so if you haven't got any paints or you don't want to get the paints out you can use paint sticks or you can colour it in with pens. I mean, anything really that will just take on the, the egg basket. So you can get them that, cracking, painting tiny. or colouring in your egg box. It's snowy glass. Yes. And let that... Play with it. <laughs> just go and just wipe his nose, please, with tissue. Oh, I haven't got a tissue. And you, once that's dry, just kind of let Danny wipe your nose. Once that's dry, then all you need... It's just a bit of card, or you could even use paper, coloured card. Then you can just stick that either side, really simply. Yeah, thank you. Stick that on either side, like that. And then you've got your Easter basket. So simple. And we've made a few of these, so they're nice for Easter decorations as well. Obviously, I've put a little bit of tissue in there, just to make them look a bit nice. And then if you wanted to, you could put some chocolates or some sweets in there. Um, I tend to put maybe like chocolate, a chocolate coin or two in there. We don't really like mini eggs. We always see them with mini eggs. And I'm always a bit worried because they're a bit of a choking hazard for the little ones. So we tend to use like chocolate coins or something like that, but whatever you fancy. So that's our first one. So dead simple. You can make as many as you want to. And they're really quick, even for the little ones that, you know, like mine, don't really, don't really love crafts and don't really have that attention span yet. Um, the other second thing that I'm going to show you is... Easter bunny. There we go. 
And it's a really similar thing that you need. So obviously for this, you will need two egg books bits. And you can paint them again, same way, paint them whatever colour you like. And then what I did is just with some white paper, it just cut out two little bunny ears like that. And then to attach them, just attach them to one of them, just sort of bent it a little bit like that. And then put the glue on the bit that's bent like that, just so it sticks a bit easier. on there, one little bunny ear, and then do the same with the other one, there, there we go, and then all you need to do is to draw your face on your little bunny. Sweetheart, that's good to hear. Snowing, mother, snowing, snowing. Because it's like this. It's snowing down the hill. It's snowing down the hill. It's really good because it does keep them entertained for quite a while because there's more to do than just your average toy, isn't there? I'm just drawing my bunny. Sometimes it drops out of our hands. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. Just drawing my bunny face on there. There you go. And that is our second Easter craft. You see, we did these the other day, didn't we? But it's so quick, so simple. But it looks really nice. There you go. So, thank you very much for watching us this morning. And um, if you have got any questions or anything, obviously pop them there. I'll, I'll try and have a look a bit later and answer them. And um, if you liked it um, and you, you know, want to get more ideas, little learners on the main page and um, where I am right now, we're doing this every weekday at 10 a.m. Um, so yeah, it's been lovely. Thank you ever so much for watching. And I think we're going to sign off now. So we'll see you all soon. Have a lovely rest of the week. I know, we're going to come and play. Thank you, everybody.